Yinjiao incident related to the Eastern Theater Command? Online revelations shockingly astonishing. Gold heist tragedy, three dead, one injured in Liaoning mine. China, society led by mental patients. CCP pumps over 5 trillion yuan to bail out local bonds in just six months. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Yin Jiao incident related to the Eastern Theater Command? Online revelations shockingly astonishing. The explosion in Yin Jiao, Beijing, last week has everyone puzzled from the get-go to the reporting. On March 18, there were these wild rumors going around overseas that blew everyone's mind, suggesting the accident was tied to the CCP's Eastern Theater Command. Xiao Lanjian, who used to work in Chinese media, hit up social media to share some unreliable news he got from a buddy he trusts. He heard that the Eastern Theater Command botched a test fire of the Dongfang-17 missile, which ended up hitting Yin Jiao and causing that explosion. Xiao pointed out, based on seen videos, that the top half of the building took a major hit, making it look like the blast came from the roof. If it had been something like a subway explosion underneath, you'd expect to see a crater in the first floor wrecked, but that wasn't what happened. Then there's Phoenix Network, which once claimed the blast packed the same punch as 100 kilograms of TNT. Xiao's thinking is that they didn't say that by accident. Phoenix Network, along with its media group, is stacked with ex-military chiefs and big shots, so it's no surprise the military might drop them some tidbits for Phoenix TV. The whole story sounds too out there, and a bunch of netizens can't wrap their heads around it. Zhao, drawing on his own experiences, noted how tight Beijing's security is. He got jammed up at a checkpoint for five hours once, coming back to Beijing from the countryside. The security team was so thorough, checking under seats, making everyone open their bags, and requiring ID registration for everyone. So, how in the world could someone sneak 100 kilograms of TNT into Beijing? Yet, there are folks online who not only buy into these rumors but even go further, guessing things like maybe it wasn't a test gone wrong but an actual missile aimed at Beijing that got intercepted and given the recent heavy crackdown on the rocket force it wouldn't be too far-fetched to think they might try to hit back by firing a missile at Beijing. Sadly, the missile went off course, a classic example of made in China failing. Naturally, there's no way to confirm these whispers. Their quick spread online is also a byproduct of the CCP's secret of ways. The official story on what went down in Yinjiao is so off the mark, it hasn't won anyone's trust. Plus, with Xi Jinping having started to purge the rocket force last year, the political drama within the CCP has only gotten worse. We've heard zip from the 20th Central Committee's third session. The latest National People's Congress wrapped up without any mention of staffing changes, leaving the new Foreign Minister Wang Yi and new Defense Minister Dong Jun out of the state councillor's spots they were expected to fill. Even the Prime Minister's press meet was axed. More bizarre was Xi Jinping apparently scolding Zhao Liji, chairman of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, at the two sessions closing for something off in his report. Seasoned media pro Yan Chun Go pointed out that, by CCP standards, any party infighting is supposed to be squared away before the big meetings to ensure everything runs without a hitch. The public ousting of Hu Jintao and the calling out of Zhao Liji are breaks from CCP tradition. Xi Jinping doing as he pleases might feel great to him, but it's cost the CCP its rep. These issues are just the tip of the iceberg, the real deal is the top-tier internal conflicts are getting so heated they can't be hidden anymore. It's all out in the open, signaling to officials at every level that the tug-of-war over the party's direction is heating up, and they better play by the rules and not step over any political lines. Whether the Njiao mess actually ties back to a military goof-up or some kind of power grab is still up in the air. Whether there'll be any shake-ups in the CCP's Eastern Theater command down the line is worth keeping an eye on. But the sheer fact this story's making rounds online seems to prove people are really feeling the CCP's political instability. Gold Heist Tragedy, 3 Dead, 1 Injured in Liaoning Mine as gold prices keep skyrocketing in China, there was a tragic incident at a gold mine in Fushun, Liaoning. 
According to an official statement, a mine cage accident at the Ruishin Source Gold Mine in Chinyuan County on the afternoon of March 13 trapped four individuals. By the early hours of March 15, all four were rescued, with one being taken for medical care while the other three were pronounced dead. The report also highlighted that the mine, situated in Jingjiagu Village, Gunadian Township, Chinyuan County, was unlicensed and had been out of operation for a long time. The person in charge of the mine, Yang, is currently behind bars. The four individuals who went down into the mine that day were there to mine for gold illegally. This event has sparked a lot of conversation. Netizens from mainland China have said things like, the mine was already shut down, and yet these people still went down there. It just goes to show, greed can be deadly. Some wonder, have they been stealing all along, or did they start up again with the recent jump in gold prices? Lately, the cost of gold in China has been climbing. With the economy on shaky ground, a lot of folks are turning to gold as a way to guard against inflation and safeguard their money. The CCP recently disclosed that as of the end of February, the central bank's gold reserves had hit 72.58 million troy ounces, roughly 2,257 tons, continuing to grow for the 16th straight month. Right now, as China's economy takes a turn for the worse and faces a quadruple killing in the real estate, stock, currency, and bond markets, assets valued in RMB are consistently losing value. China specialist Tang Hao noted on Crossroads of the World that the CCP is rapidly accumulating gold not only to maintain but possibly to increase its financial strength, as the global situation gets more turbulent, raising the demand for gold as a safe haven. Additionally, the strong desire among the general public to hedge against risk is also prompting the central bank to bulk up its gold reserves significantly. China, society led by mental patients. Looking at the instances where Chinese Communist Party officials took their own lives in the past few years, it's clear that a significant number of them are dealing with depression. Put another way, if it weren't for the media coverage of these events, people wouldn't realize they're being governed by individuals who have mental health issues. On March 13, Liu Handong, who once held the positions of deputy director for the Jiangsu Provincial People's Congress Standing Committee, was arrested over allegations of bribery and misuse of power. This incident has people revisiting the tragic end of Luo Jijun, the former secretary of the Jiangsu Provincial Committee and Liu Handong's once superior. Luo Jijun took his own life by leaping from a building due to depression on April 1, 2023, right before Liu Handong's career came crashing down. Luo also served as a former director of the Jiangsu Provincial People's Congress Standing Committee. The issue of mental health struggles within party officials is back in the spotlight. A notable number of Chinese Communist Party officials, entangled in corruption or legal troubles, are battling depression or other mental health conditions. The causes and methods of their deaths are diverse, with many shifting from a state of normalcy to abnormality due to the CCP's oppressive, greed-fueled, and inhumane regime, further leading to vast societal calamities. The unsound leadership of mentally ill party officials. Lately, there's been a recurring theme in the news about CCP officials ending their lives due to depression. Names like the former vice governor of Fujian, Jing Xiaosong, and the former head of the state administration of foreign exchange Li Fuxiang have surfaced. Even further back, three individuals closely associated with Mao Zedong, Lu Xiaohua, Jiang Qing, and Mao Anqing, with Mao Anqing passing away due to illness in Beijing in March 2007, had their battles with mental health documented. The World Health Organization labels depression as a mental disorder. According to Baidu Baiki, it's seen as a symptom of neurosis, a condition brought on by the body's dysfunction, manifesting as insomnia, anxiety, hypochondria, phobia, obsessive-compulsive disorder, neurasthenia, and neurotic vomiting, among others. Wikipedia medically groups it under mental and behavioral disorders, with depressive mood identified as a symptom of certain emotional disturbances. Simply put, it falls under the umbrella of mental illness. Reviewing the CCP officials ending their life in recent years, it's apparent that a significant portion stems from depression, implying that without media exposure of these deaths, the populace would remain unaware that they're under the command of individuals grappling with mental health issues. 
These mentally ill officials frequently make illogical decisions in their governance, issuing commands, and in their execution of duties. Before they're officially diagnosed or take their lives, compliance is the only option for others, as these officials are quick to anger when faced with dissent. This results in actions and policies that are irrational, defy logic, and contravene social and natural laws, leading to societal upheavals and chaos. Instances include agricultural officials demolishing crops and livestock enclosures, traffic police conducting DUI checks atop rural homes, and authorities blowing up commercial buildings and swiftly destroying evidence, leaving the public baffled at such directives. Actions like these, along with the erratic enforcement of policies such as the one-child policy flip-flopping to having multiple children is an honor, not to mention the absurd mandates of the Cultural Revolution and the great leap forward that led to catastrophic social disasters, all underscore the irrationality and abnormal behavior at the helm of decision-making. Since 2009, the CCP has taken an interest in the mental health of its officials. Zhu Zhuahong from the Chinese Academy of Sciences, shared with China Newsweek that from 2009 to 2016, 245 officials either ended their life, disappeared, or were suspected of ending their life due to depression. Alarmingly, a significant number of Han Chinese officials in Xinjiang have shown signs of depression, affecting over half of all party and government staff. Experts share their experiences. Su Yan, a psychology professor at Beijing Normal University, told China Newsweek about the alarmingly high rates of officials taking their own lives, rumored to be 100 times that of the general population, though such claims lack verified sources. A significant insight came from a study by the Central Commission for Discipline Inspection, which found that not all officials who died under unusual circumstances did so out of guilt for corruption, many were grappling with severe mental health issues, including hallucinations and paranoia. Sue recounted an instance from her consultations with officials, where one admitted during a session his urge to leap out of a window. He was dead serious, not joking, sharing his genuine feelings. It's noted that officials in distress often avoid seeking psychological help, fearing career repercussions. Instead, they initially turn to feng shui experts to rearrange their homes, seeking relief. Eventually, following persistent issues and on a doctor's recommendation, they might consult a psychologist. In her lectures on mental health to party officials, Sue observed a high level of engagement, particularly with topics on managing psychological stress. However, she noted a reluctance among many to openly discuss their mental struggles. Post-lecture, some officials would contact her privately, cautious to share only minimal details to maintain anonymity with some even using public phones to avoid leaving traces. CCP pumps over 5 trillion yuan to bail out local bonds in just six months. Based on the latest data released by the Central Bank of China, Beijing's base money supply exceeds that of the United States, the European Union and the United Kingdom combined. In just the past six months, the Beijing authorities issued more than 5 trillion yuan in base currency and it is estimated that more than 70% of it was to pay for local bonds. So, how is this 5 trillion yuan of base currency printed? An account on the X platform, at Keijin Shujuku, reported on March 17 that the central bank's financial data from February reveals significant growth in China's money supply. Broad money, M2, reached 299.56 trillion yuan, about $41.6 trillion USD marking an 8.7% increase year-on-year. -year. Narrow money, M1, stood at 66.59 trillion yuan, about $9.2 trillion USD, with a 1.2% growth from the previous year. Social financing stock hit 385.72 trillion yuan, about $53.6 trillion USD, up 9% year-on-year. In the first two months, Chinese yuan loans rose by 6.37 trillion yuan, approximately $884.8 billion USD, while deposits increased by 6.44 trillion yuan, approximately $894.5 billion USD. This data indicates China's per capita currency holding is approximately 212,800 yuan, nearly 30,000 US dollars. 
For comparison, the United States M2 at the end of January 2024 was $20.8 trillion, the Eurozone's M2 was 15.1 trillion euros, about $16.4 trillion USD, and the UK's M2 was 3 trillion pounds sterling, about $3.8 trillion USD. China's M2 surpasses the combined M2 of the USD plus Euro plus GBP countries, totaling about 296 trillion yuan, about 41.11 trillion US dollars. This shows how fierce China's currency flood is. More than 5 trillion yuan base currency issued in half a year. The article highlights that central banks typically ease monetary policy in two ways by adjusting interest rates to influence broad money supply and by directly altering the amount of base money. A significant jump in a central bank's balance sheet size usually signals a large-scale expansion of base currency, indicating the implementation of quantitative easing QE. Over the past decade, the central bank of China's balance sheet grew steadily but saw a dramatic increase in the latter half of 2023 expanding by 5 trillion yuan in just six months, a stark contrast to the 5 trillion yuan, about 694.5 billion US dollars, expansion over the previous eight years. This surge in assets confirms that Beijing has engaged in QE, injecting nearly 5 trillion yuan into the economy in half a year. Unlike the United States, Europe, and Japan, which engaged in aggressive money printing from 2020 to 2021, China initially did not follow suit. However, as Western central banks began to taper their balance sheets in the latter half of 2023, China's central bank initiated a significant QE effort. Analysis of the central bank's main assets over the last six months shows minor changes in foreign exchange, gold, and treasury bonds. The significant shift occurred in claims on other depository companies, accounting for the 5 trillion yuan increase primarily representing claims on commercial banks, credit unions, and policy banks. So, how is this 5 trillion yuan of base currency printed? The answer is that, except for gold and foreign exchange, all other bonds and credit assets, relending, qualify as central bank collateral. The central bank's claims on commercial banks were relatively small in size and proportion before 2015. However, since the end of 2015, the scale of the assets has expanded rapidly, from less than 3 trillion yuan to more than 18 trillion yuan now. In 2015, the Central Bank of China, the Ministry of Finance and the China Banking and Insurance Regulatory Commission jointly issued a document that included bonds publicly issued by local governments into the scope of treasury collateral. If you guessed correctly, more than 70% of the underlying assets of this claim against other depository companies may be local government bonds, in addition to trillions of yuan in bank credit assets and reloans. Hyperinflation may eat up the savings of Chinese people. In order to save local finances that are about to collapse, Beijing is increasing its efforts to pay for them. At the same time, more state-owned enterprises in China are also facing the fate of bankruptcy. Beijing needs more funds to rescue these state-owned enterprises. Chinese economist Su Chenggang said in an exclusive interview with Deutsche Welle on March 8 that Beijing now owes a lot of debt, and at the same time many Chinese companies are going bankrupt. To save each enterprise, it needs hundreds of billions, but in fact Beijing does not have so many resources to use. Beijing must ultimately rely on large-scale currency issuance to solve the problem. Such a large-scale currency issuance will inevitably produce serious inflation after deflation passes. In early February this year, Su Chenggang pointed out in an interview with Yuan Li, the host of the Don't Understand podcast, that the savings of Chinese people face a big risk, which is hyperinflation, which could wipe out all people's savings. For example, in the former Soviet Union and Eastern and Central European countries, when the communist regime collapsed, hyperinflation suddenly occurred. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.